you can go right now to abnsat.com. That's abnsat.com. And pledge your support. Or you can call us live here on the air, 248-416-1300. And believe me, folks, no amount is too small. $10, $20, $50 will all be appreciated and such an encouragement to us. Thank you for watching. Back to you, Pastor Joseph. A very short break, and we'll be right back with Brother Osama Doc Duke and Jesus or Muhammad. If you would like to watch a show you recently missed, or would just like to browse our live show directory, we encourage all of our viewers to go to our four YouTube channels. You may find our four YouTube accounts by typing www.youtube.com slash abnsat or slash English Gospel, or slash Arabic Gospel, or slash Aramaic Gospel. We appreciate all of your support and prayers, and if you have any questions or comments, please visit our website at www.abnsat.com, or you can call us at Welcome back to Jesus or Muhammad, and uh, before we go back to Brother Osama, we'd like to welcome a friend on Skype who's going to uh, be here with us and share some commentary and some thoughts, Brother Ted Shabbat. Brother Ted, are you with us? Yes, sir. Oh, wonderful. I'm glad you're with us. This is the first time I've had the pleasure of being with you on the show. Welcome to ABN, dear friend. Thanks for having me. Yes. Uh, have you been able to hear the, uh, the presentation of Brother Osama? Yes, sir. Great. Now, would you like to share any comments, thoughts, additions to this topic of slavery in Islam versus uh, Christianity uh, so far? And we're going to come back to you periodically uh, and allow you to, in, uh, you know, share. But so far, would you like to share anything? Yes, I would. Be, you guys talk about slavery in the United States, and I would like to give some commentary on that, some really good facts about, you know, that you know, so many people bring up slavery in America, but no one's bringing up uh, slavery in the Islamic world and how today slavery in the Islamic world is still going on. And I would like to give you guys a little history lesson. There's a historian by the name of Marcus Redeker, and he wrote a book called The Slave Ship of Human History. And I would like to read to you what he wrote. He said, quote, from the 7th century to the 19th, more than 9 million souls were carried northward in the trans-Saharan trade organized by Arab merchants in North Africa and their Islamic allies. These slaves were traded in highly developed commercial markets. In many areas, when European slave traders arrived on the coast, they simply entered pre-existing circuits of exchange and did not immediately alter them. Mm. And mm. it just goes to show you that the Islamic world has been involved in slavery since Muhammad founded the cult of Islam. Yeah. And what's yeah. amazing is how the pagan world worked with the Muslims. A good example is the Vikings. The Vikings attacked many Christian uh, villages and, and towns in many Christian countries, Ireland, Scotland, uh, even France. All these many Christian nations, especially Ireland, were victims of the Viking hordes. 
And the Vikings used to take slave girls and slave boys, and they used to sell them to the Muslims in North Africa. And I also read that the Vikings doubled the price for, uh, I believe, female boys over girls. So the Vikings were pagans. They worshipped Odin. And it shows you that the, the pagan world and the Islamic world were, were working together. And, uh, you know, well, you were saying something? No, go ahead. Go ahead. And also there was a, another historian by the name of Ronald Seagull. And he wrote some, some very valuable facts about the Muslim, uh, Muslim slavery. He said uh, that in the Muslim world, quote, the casualties involved in enslavement wars were absolutely unspeakable. Moreover, slave ownership was more widespread in Islamic societies, so much so that even small shoekeepers owned slaves. Mm, mm. Uh, the wealthy collected concubines as status symbols, the way people in the West collect motor cars. Mm, One mm. ruler had 14,000 slaves. To protect these harems, Muslims preferred eunuchs, since ordinary castration was technically, was technically against Islamic law. Young black males underwent an even more savage procedure that mutilated their bodies in the level of the abdomen. So it shows you the brutality of the Islamic world when it, come, when it came to slavery. And even today, uh, the Islamic world is involved in slavery. A, a good example is what's going on in Sudan. You have black Muslims who have Arab blood in them. And because they have Arab blood, they believe they are superior to the purely African uh, uh, Muslims. And they are massacring yeah. them. And also, you have many Christian girls in Sudan who have become sex slaves uh, uh, to the Muslim army in Sudan. And this is what people need to understand, is that the time we are living in today, we are living in a time where we have more slavery than any other period in history. Mm. You know, we, we, we keep bringing up co uh, colonization, what the Europeans did. But today, right now, what's going on right now, uh, we live in. We have more slavery than than any other time. We have more. Ted, Muslim Ted I'm, yes. I'm sorry. I just need to uh, cut you for a moment. Um, I'm going to go back to Osama. I appreciate your comments. The technicians are going to talk to you off the air just to correct your picture. I think you need to lift your camera up a little bit because we're we're cutting off your head. But your comments are, are excellent, very germane to the topic. We're going to go back to Osama. They're going to fix your camera, and then we're going to come back to you in just a little while. Thank you, brother Ted. Brother Osama, uh, I think that what Ted just said is kind of a sneak preview of some things you're going to be sharing later in your own presentation. Uh, tonight's presentation, we're going to be talking about uh, the history, uh, what, took, what took place uh, since the beginning uh, of slavery, and uh, the, we compare what's happened in the slavery in the West and the slavery in the East, in the Middle East. And he is absolutely right uh, what he called. Actually, this most people are used in our uh, history. Wonderful people have done a uh, very extensive uh, work and study concerning slavery uh, in the history of mankind. Yeah. Uh, we go back to Leviticus. Sure. In uh, Leviticus uh, chapter 25, uh, verse 3 and 4, we have a passage. And maybe when somebody reads it, says, what does it have to do with slavery? It have to mm -hmm. do a lot with slavery. So uh, we will uh, listen carefully to what God said about the years of work. The years of work. So here we go. The Bible said... So this is the context of the passage. Yes, yes indeed. Let's play that if we can back there. Let's play the audio of that slide. Guys, if you can help us a lot, but it will be good here. Leviticus 25, 3 and 4, the Bible said, Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land. A Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard. Here, here is Brother Joseph. We see a calendar, a calendar for work. People do not work whenever they feel or however they like and how long they like to work. God has given in the book of Leviticus a schedule, the years to work. Six years you work and seven years they have a year off. And let me just say and remind our viewers, this, which you just shared, is the beginning of this section that we find these verses in. This is the context where we find in these verses that Obama was closing for slavery. Absolutely, slavery. absolutely. We'll continue with the following passage concerning the years of work and how long people should work. 